gentlemen. My presentation today is going to cover the recent developments in the media freedom in Macedonia. Uh, my work attempts to eliminate an inherent contradiction between the international laws on the books and in practice by focusing on the inapplicability of those laws on freedom of expression in transitioning democracies. This fairly small case has much greater implications than one might assume uh, because the huge difference of the laws in the books from their application in reality in the case of Macedonia puts the whole international legislation on this issue in question. Uh, I'm going to start off by defining me, uh, freedom of expression in international law and derive several general criteria that will, according to the international community, amount to a sufficient level of media freedom. Then I will present a brief discussion on the political environment in Macedonia since it, its independence. After illustrating the similarity of Macedonia's legal structure for media freedom to the existing international standards, I will describe several actions taken by the political parties with an aim to attain control over the independent media, which ironically are within the boundaries of the laws themselves. Um, by, pro by proving that the media freedom in Macedonia is almost non-existent, uh, thus showing the dysfunction of the internationally recognized laws, I will argue that the laws themselves are not as pristine as they are often deemed to be and are not strong enough to prevent the abuse of the media. Uh, in short, I will support the claim that the functionality of these norms in liberal democracies around the world does not give them the status of universal applicability and it does not guarantee the same success if the standards are correspond correspondingly applied in transitioning democracies. Uh, the unique condition in transitioning democracies such as Macedonia significantly lower the effectiveness of international laws, which in turn impedes on the democracy of the society in question. First of all, I will provide a general definition of freedom of expression from international law. Uh, according to the Human Rights Committee, freedom of expression is a fundamental freedom that establishes the framework for the development and practice of other rights, such as that of voting or assembly. Uh, it ensures transparency and, ac and accountability and includes political discourse, commentary on one's own and public affairs, canvassing, discussion of human rights, journalism, cul cultural or artistic expression, or religious discourse, etc. As a part of freedom of expression, uh, media freedom serves many roles in society, including its main one uh, to function as a bulwark of democracy by protecting the citizenry from the abuse of the government's power. Uh, on that note, no individual group or government entity should be able to influence which stories journalists choose to pursue or what information and analysis these stories contain. Following the previous notion, the Council of Europe calls for guaranteeing of the editorial independence of the media and the least influential funding method for any public broadcasting services in the country. Uh, also, the Human Rights Committee indicated that the arrest, detention, restrictions on traveling can harm the right of individuals to criticize or openly and publicly evaluate their government's actions without fear of interference or punishment. Uh, as a last note, liberal democracies insist upon self-regulation of the media content, physical protection of journalists, and reasonable use of defamation charges that does not include harassment. Uh, as previously mentioned, I will arrive at three general criteria which, if satisfied, would, according to the international community, amount to an acceptable level of media freedom. Uh, my first point of reference is the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights. Article 19 of the same establishes that everyone shall have the same right, shall have the right to hold opinions without interference and that everyone shall have the right to freedom of expression, which will include the freedom to seek, receive and impart information and ideas of all kinds regardless of frontiers. It also mentions that these rights carry with them special duties and responsibilities which sometimes might call for derogation for preservation of higher values. Uh, next is the Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, or the European Convention of Human Rights, which is fairly similar to the ICCPR in terms of this right. Uh, it establishes that everyone has the right to freedom of expression, and the same includes the freedom to hold opinions and to receive and impart information and ideas without interference by public authority, regardless of frontiers again. It also notes that the exercise of these freedoms may be subject to such formalities, conditions, restrictions, or penalties as are prescribed by law and are necessary in a democratic society, society in, in the interest of national security, territorial integrity, public safety, etc. I will omit from mentioning the African or American Charter on Human Rights simply because they contain almost identical uh, definitions of this right. Uh, using this vague yet sufficient definitions of freedom of expression, I reached three general criteria for the protection and preservation of this right. First of all, there is the freedom to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas of all kinds, which is stressed by the ICCPR. 
Uh, it is undisputable that providing the public with a wide scope of information and perspective on such information as well as access to the same is crucial to its ability to make reasonable and informed decisions. Uh, furthermore, the necessity of information and ideas of all kinds inevitably suggests that there is a need for a variety of media outlets or media pluralism which will make such events possible. That leads to the second criterion, or the existence of a multiplicity of autonomous and individual media outlets at the national, regional, and local levels, uh, which will provide the public with diverse content reflecting the different political and cultural views, as well as a forum for public debate and criticism. Finally, the third point, which is crucial to the persistence of the other two, is the ability of everyone to express their own opinion without interference by public authorities, except for the special situation which I discussed under U the European Convention. Uh, this criterion ensures the professionalism among journalists in their obligation of, obligation of informing society by describing events, analyzing influential po policies or such events in good faith and on an accurate factual basis, while also respecting their professional code of conduct in spite of a significant resistance and threats from both the public and the private sectors. Uh, Macedonia has signed and ratified both of these documents, thus making itself bound to not take any actions which will violate any of the established human rights or the purpose of the treaty itself. And as we will see from its constitution, it has implemented the general provisions of these treaties in its legislation. I'm going to continue with some historical background which will provide some of the reasons for Macedonia's current situation. Uh, having been repeatedly occupied by numerous despotic regimes for centuries because of its crucial geographical position, Macedonia has continuously sought for international recognition as a sovereign country, which it finally attained after it joined the communist Yugoslavia after the Second World War. Uh, despite the abatement of political and juridical sovereignty, Macedonia decided to proclaim its own independence of the 8th of September 1991 in the midst of Yugoslavia's dissolution and set out on a path towards democracy evident from its constitution, which is akin to many of the Western democracies' constitutions. Uh, moreover, Macedonia has progressively developed its leg legislation by implementing numerous international treaties on human rights, as I have previously mentioned. Uh, however, this vast transition led to a distorted model, model of practicing democracy in which the political parties attained extreme power over every sphere of Macedonia's society. Uh, in other words, the parties, or more accurately, the parties' leaders along with their closest advisors who tend to hold key ministerial posts, have substantial influence over the three governmental branches and run the political life of the country. Um, unfortunately, the independent media quickly fell to the government's huge power. Uh, the political parties, in their attempt to either criticize the opposing party or promote their own agenda, have attained strong control over the public and private media, which significantly deteriorated its independence. Uh, this trend to, is contrary to what one would expect from the international body's approval of Macedonia's legal framework for media freedom. Um, next, I will illustrate the similarity of Macedonia's legislation to the international treaties that I previously discussed. Article 16 of Macedonia's democratic constitution guarantees the freedom of personal conviction, conscious thought, and public expression of thought, the freedom of speech, public address, public information, and the establishment of institutions for public information. It also establishes free access to information and the freedom of reception and transmission of information, as well as the right of reply and correction via the mass media and the right to protect the source of information. Article 17 discusses the limits of confidentiality or the interest of the defense of the republic. The existence, of a, the existence of a consistent legal framework for the protection of this freedom is further supported by numerous evaluation of several of Macedonia's electoral codes as seen in the reports from the European Commission of, for Democracy through Law. For example, the Commission recognized increase, the increasing independence of the Broadcasting Council and it indicated that the legal framework for freedom of expression, including the media, meets most international standards. Also, the rulebook for equal access to the media pre presentation during the election campaign states that, states that broadcasting covering elections should do so in a fair, balanced, and impartial manner, and that media coverage of the government activities is not allowed to favor any of the contestants' campaign. Moreover, it propagates equal and proportional coverage, and it, and it just recently decriminalized defamation, insult, and it set maximum levels on award in defamation cases. Simply put, Macedonia's domestic legislation is in accordance to the previously mentioned international treaties, in spite of the several minor infractions or gaps that need to be filled in. Having provided a simple definition of media freedom and having established Macedonia's legal structure in such regards, it would be reasonable to assume that the media freedom in Macedonia is at least on a satisfactory level. 
However, Macedonia's declining media freedom, as seen from its fall in the Amnesty International's rankings from the 34th to the 116th position in just four years, despite the means for its... На Амнести, значи, без оглед на она што случувало и порано гледаме дека нашето место, значи, падна от 3-4 на 120-то, кога стана озбора слобода на медиумите. И тука гледаме дека во некоја смисла и има одредени достатоци во законите. Е сега, кога стана озбор за медиумското ширење на информации, ке треба да се ограничи влијанието на владачките партии со гласно законите. Значи, селективното рекламирање е исто така важно. Тоа е дека ова влада повеќе се формирала десет пати повеќе било која друга предходна. И може, значи, да видите дека без оглед на тоа што ова е формулирано и регулирано во националните закони за тоа колку сме и каде сме. Исто така и ова е влошено со фактот на тоа што владата може да одлучи каде ке се рекламира а бидејќи таа е едната од најголема кон единствениот панели, најголемите најголемото тело кој што се рекламира за да може и тоа е доведува до судри помеѓу провладините и контравладините медиуми а дневник беше тој Those media outlets which fail to lure the government or simply refuse to do so in order to retain some professionalism often end up with no other choice than to file for bankruptcy, as seen in the closure of the newspaper Globus, a staunch critic of the government, or the closure of the weekly, the weekly Gragansky and the weekly and daily newspaper Focus. In other words, the government, by preferring one media over the other, forces the unyielding outlets out of the market. This destructive behavior culminated with the closure of the ad and TV station and the three anti-governmental dailies Spitz, Vreme and Koha Ere, uh, which resulted in the loss of over 450 journalist jobs, which is a significant number once one considers the size of Macedonia's media market. Instead of a lot, moreover, an expert from CIMO pointed out the numerous selective and politically motivated court cases and lawsuits against journalists, the selectivity of legal procedures, and the existence of numerous media outlets owned by politicians, as well as their family or close relatives, such as Sitel or Canal Pit, as some of the reasons for the harsh environment for independent journalism in Macedonia. Um, this unfortunate example showed that the three criteria for the protection of the freedom of the media are not satisfied in Macedonia. The closures of the media outlets harm the principle which requires information of all kinds, as well as the existence of the numerous media outlets that will provide that information since it eliminated media that provided the other side of the story or the opposition's perspective. Also, it prevented several journalists from expressing their opinions directly, as seen in the case of the selective layoffs against anti-governmental journalists. Moreover, there exist numerous, enormous and selective advertisements, one-sided investigations, and huge pressure, both direct and indirect, on journalists. Numerous international organizations have criticized Macedonia's government on this matter, albeit without considering that the actions they objected to were in accordance with the laws that they themselves promoted and Macedonia implemented. Having shown Macedonia's real situation of almost non-existent media freedom, my paper casts doubt on the validity, strength, and universal applicability and functionality of international norms and regulations on the freedom of expression and the media. Considering the fact that Macedonia's laws are almost equivalent to what the international community deems as a solid legal structure for the protection and promotion of this right, it would not be unreasonable to conclude that the laws of the international community themselves are not as, are not as strong as they are often perceived to be. The media regime in a country should be determined according to the country's model of democracy, as well as its social, economical, political, and cultural order, and the international community should consider facts and circumstances in counter the democratizing societies which might, thank you, which might justify modifying, suspending, or possibly even discarding on a temporary basis strict adherence to the widely accepted norms. Being aware of this law's dysfunctional nature in practice, we must seek ways to strengthen the laws and regulation themselves as well as better ways of implementing them that consider the context in which they will apply rather than simply advocating for the implementation or duplication of the functional laws and regulations from the advanced liberal democracies. Thank you very much. Just briefly, I'm not going to ask questions because the purpose of my... 
Um, because I'm just going to provide a comment. I agree with my colleague with his thesis stating the deterioration of the state of affairs, the media. You identified the opposition and the uh, party in power as the guilty parties. I'm not going to talk about uh, who is uh, more guilty of this, but I'm just going to extract this, that saying that in the past five or six years, the Macedonian government has advertised even more and more in addition to the uh, economic crisis and the increased um, costs. Even Peter Arsovsky here is quoted by saying that 10 times more is the government advertised than before. But on the other hand, I agree with the fact that it is the single tool that you have in order to gain power or to um, attract support by the population. Media is a single tool because we cannot fight chest to chest. We cannot go into the hills and you know, fight from there with weapons, but you have the media in order to gain power. You mentioned A1, AI then, because I'm a certified accountant lecturer. When I talk just before the students, I cannot be critical towards A1 and say yes, closing down TV station is okay or say, it's a political process. I support only this, saying that fiscal discipline has to be present. I mean, America, it is said, you either pay, you, you, you have to do two things, pay tax and die. So, Velia Ramkovsky, that's the director of the A1, um, chose his path. Either I'm going to, you know, pay or shut down. I don't know. Um, how he gained the self-confidence as a medium, it was okay. My pain, my subjective opinion is that 300 journalists were left without work, without job. There are other forms like Alpha Television, so you can, um, because Alpha Television um, accommodated and uh, hired all the journalists that were fired. So in the end, I would say that I agree that if you are, if you are not in the media, you don't exist. This is the new philosophy of um, governance. I support it. Any other opposition that has to uh, replace the party in power will have to know that the manipulation, attracting of the political uh, constituents are through the media. I have a question. Misha Netkov, PhD, Macedonian Radio and Television. Based on what fact have you built the thesis that in Macedonia there is no freedom of uh, speech in journalism? That's the first and the second to identify an example after the fall of the Berlin Wall. In, point out one country in Southeast Europe that has more favorable media conditions so we can uh, benchmark against it or refer to it and um, taking into account the fact that there are 86 TV stations of which 15 are the minority uh, are to the non-majority communities and if the Macedonian television has nine programs of the minority uh, ethnic communities, how can you talk about a suffocation if there are so many newspapers, TVs on Bos Bosniak or Bosnian language, uh, Albanian, Serbian, Vlak language, and Greek, Bulgarian, Serbian, so what are the sources that you've used and what are, and to what extent they are uh, valid? Because there are two associations of journalists, one from one side, the other from another, and all that is has a political uh, partisan note, so political party and ideological 
influences. So let's not criticize the government for suffocating the public and media. Maybe I can answer for 10 seconds? No. Comfortable speaking in English rather than Macedonian. And in regards to the sources, I use I use a lot of the reports from the inter, from a lot of international organizations, such as the Human Rights Committee, the Council of Europe, as well as several of the, let's say, internet-based media in Macedonia. And I have a lot of the sources. I mean, we can discuss it later on. I can show you my paper, and I, I mean, you will see all of the sources from which I derived my thesis that the media freedom in Macedonia has been decreasing. And you mentioned that we have a lot of newspapers as well as media outlets uh, which cover a lot of the different ethnicities in Macedonia and different language and all that. But the problem that we have in Macedonia is that all of the major TV stations and the major media outlets are somewhat skewed towards the government, governmental side. And a lot of the advertisements that go on to those televisions usually tend to favor the government while the oppositional stance or the stance of many other many other of the small parties is simply neglected. I mean, I, I'm not blaming, I mean, I am technically blaming the political parties for that, but it's also the international laws which they, which according to the international community would, would have allowed us to have a free media market which will promote the media freedom, but using these laws, our political parties have managed to um, sort of get over them and come to a point where they can simply abuse the media by the sole fact that they have the purse of the government. While the oppositional parties or many of the smaller parties, uh, I'm not discussing whether their view is right or wrong, and I'm not even discussing whether the view of the government is right or wrong. I'm just saying that the representation that they have on the media today is much greater than the other parties have, and that, according to me, is sort of um, limiting the first of the criteria that I mentioned or the freedom of everyone to access information and ideas of all kinds in order to make their informed decisions whenever they go out to vote or whenever they're trying to choose their party or make decisions on any issue. I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Novakovsky, to the critics, I disagree uh, with the fact that this is a negative critic, uh, this is a positive critic, and this should be uh, the essence of the panel. Uh, the basic problem in which we are facing now is not only the problem of freedom of speech of media, but the selectiveness of this dissemination of information by the media. What is the problem by the means of which Macedonia is faced? So, there are a lot of political parties in the country that cannot even have the sufficient media room, that space. media space. Even if they get it, it's very short, selective, and inappropriate, and sometimes even wrongfully interpreted. So, we should also mention the following, and that is that the social responsibility that the media uh, have, so their accountability and responsibility, and that is for the media to work for the citizens and by the citizens. So the information should reach each and every citizen, but the in citizen will have the right and has the that right is to read an irrelevant information, even though it addresses all of the citizens of the Republic of Macedonia. Thank you. I totally agree with what all of them receive from select where people and I totally agree that we have a right to access of information. We need to get um, a variety of perspectives of, on any information in order to make an informed decision. Um, in regards to the ethnic separation of the media, I agree with that. that but in a way that functions good because 
uh, all of the ethnicities have their own TV station. I mean, the majority of them have, and they at least get a perspective that regards to their interests, even though that might not be the ideal thing. But it, that's even how our government structures were, is structured where the government, I mean, the party that's in power, is also with a coalition with some of the minority parties. So. I mean, we can discuss it later on after this. Благодарам. Не, значи ги пробивме сите рокови, мораме да одиме понатаму. Андре, ќе биде тука на паузата за... So we have to finish now. Sorry. Only one sentence because of the... One sentence, and that is... Macedonia is a unitary state. It's not a confederate or a federate state. Information address all citizens. Thank you.